Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. Today I have a quick tutorial that I think some people will find very useful. We're going to talk about when a joist meets a ridge beam and how to make the, the joist automatically clean up to that ridge beam. It could be for wood, wood, for wood framing, um, but it also could be for cold form metal or even, even steel framing, depending on what it is. So I want to thank Chris Broda from uh, the BIM After Dark community for asking this question. For those of you not familiar with what the BIM After Dark community is, it's a private community uh, with courses, office hours, and uh, general news feed with chat and all kinds of good stuff. Um, you can see here, here's a whole bunch of, of, of uh, chats that are going on right now and, and questions. And if I pull up, if I search for Ridge, you can see here's the question from Chris. And as you can see, uh, here's the condition she's trying to create. And then we work through uh, myself and other members help help her work through the problem. So uh, if you've ever sat there and uh, had a Revit question and wasn't sure who to ask or really needed an answer fast, um, BIM After Dark community is the place for you. So if you're interested, head on over to community.bimafterdark.com. Uh, right now I am offering a 14 day free trial. So you can check out all the content, all the courses, join an office hour, reach out to me and have a good time. So hopefully I'll see you guys in there. Again, that's community.bamafterdark.com. Um, so let's jump into the tutorial right now. What I have here is a Revit file. It's got a roof with a nice 912 pitch to it. Um, and I've loaded in uh, dimensional lumber framing. So if I go under beam, you'll see I have two by four up to two by 12. I thought this was a cool opportunity to show you um, how to just model a couple basic structural things and some interesting tips on that. So I'm going to click beam. I'm actually going to put my ridge beam in. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to do a two by twelve, and I'm going to I'm going to do by line. And there's lots of ways you can model this. You can model it with a reference plane. You can model it with a a level, um, uh, etc. You could offset it from a level. You, whatever you want to do. But this is kind of a cool trick. If you check the box here that says 3D snapping right in the middle, um, and then you select the middle of the ridge. You'll see you have, let me zoom out a little bit. Um, you have this ridge beam that actually uh, is stuck to the ridge itself. Uh, I know it's rotated, I'll show you that in a second. But the cool thing about it is because it's 3D snapping, if I pull this up and pull it down, you'll notice that the ridge beam stays there. So how do we make it vertical? Like we would most likely want it to be. I'm gonna select the ridge beam and um, where it says orientation, notice this is normal. If I flip this to horizontal, guess what? We got ourselves a horizontal beam. And it actually moves up and down with it. Pretty cool, right? So we want the ridge beam in there first because in order for this technique to work, um, ideally you wanna use selecting um, your support beam for the beam system. This could work, the same technique could work on individual joists, individual beams and connections, but I'm just showing you with a beam system, uh, the typical setup. So now we're gonna do our joists. Or we're gonna do our, our ceiling or our rafters, I guess, in this case. In this case. So our, our, our roof rafters. I'm gonna click beam system. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select right here where it says pick supports. And then I'm gonna select that one beam. So I'm gonna start right there so I know that that beam that we just put in our ridge beam is one of our supports. Now, if you had other beams, other framing in the in the project, you could select those. Because we're just using the roof, um, I'm actually going to um, pick the edges. But because this is a roof uh, a roof rafter system, um, I'm going to set my work plane to the bottom of this roof. So I'm going to click Set. I'm going to say Pick Plane. So I'm going to select the bottom of this roof. So now, if I turn on Show Work Planes, you can see. I'm drawing essentially on the bottom of that roof plane, okay? But then I'm all, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick edges and I'm gonna select around my roof. Let me turn off show here. I'm gonna use TR on my keyboard for trim and I'm just gonna trim these up. So we have a nice rectangular sketch. You can see it there. And then I'm also going to change my direction. So right now, if you see these two lines here, anyone not familiar with beam systems, um, these two lines are telling me the direction of my, of my rafters, which is, in the, the horizontal direction, we want them vertical. So I'm gonna click beam direction, I'm gonna select this guy. So now they're gonna go in that direction, which is what we want. I'm gonna change these to two by tens, and I'm gonna change them to a two foot uh, on center. I know probably it's gonna be 16 inches, but I don't feel like seeing that many beams. In fact, I might even go to three feet for now. And then I'm gonna click finish. And so now I have my roof a little transparent so you can see it. So if I zoom in, you can see we have all of our joists here. And what's really neat about this one, before I even talk about <clears throat> cutting these, is if I move my roof pitch, because of the way I've built this, you'll notice everything actually flexes with it, which is super cool. 
See if I go down here, this flexes with it. It looks like it's going off. This ridge beam's going off a little bit, and uh, that's okay. So now, what we want to do is, this is the condition we're trying to fix, right? We want to go from this to something clean. So how do we do it? A couple different ways. The way I'm going to show you today is using a tool that exists inside of Revit for structural framing, which is coping. Okay, and so coping, if you select any structural uh, framing element in Revit, um, you'll notice there's a little option over here that says cope. And what it does is it, and actually I'll hover over it so you can see, is it's going to cope the beams together. So it's going to join the beams together. And it's going to try and fit them however the family um, wants them to be. All right, so now before we, before we cut these rafters using the coping tool, um, what I want to do is I just noticed that this ridge beam isn't really centered. So it's not necessarily, let me go to the front view here, not necessarily a great example of exactly what the conditions will be. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to, move it. I'm not really sure why it jumped off the line, but that's fine. So I'm going to move it so it's centered. So let's move it down um, off of that line. So it's a little more accurate. Um, you know, I don't know what this is. We'll just say half inch for now. So I'm going to go in my Z offset, negative half inch. And we could probably go a little more, but that's all right. Negative. Let's do five eighths or something. I don't know, whatever. But I don't feel like getting it in detail in that, but you get the idea. I wanted this to be a little more realistic because those of you trying at home um, may come up and be like, well, my beam didn't go through. So I wanted to show you what happens if it doesn't. So if it doesn't go through, it can make it a little more challenging because it won't it won't cope. It won't cut unless it's, it's going through this structural beam. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to select all these rafters. So I'm just going to select them all. I'm going to go to filter, joist. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a setting here called the end join cutback. Notice how there's a start extension. There's an end join cutback. And so that's the joining of these rafters to their structural element. And so if I if I was to put this as a, a positive value, it's actually going to go away from the element. So I'm actually going to do negative. Uh, let's do one foot for now. And now you'll see they all go through the ridge beam. And that's what you want. OK, so now it's time to cope them. So what I'm going to do is select one of the, the one of the raptors. I'm going to select cope. I'm going to have to select it again. I guess I could have went to modify cope first, but that's okay. Select the rafter again. Make sure multiple cut is selected. Then select the ridge beam. And as you can see, there it is there. And then just continue down the line and you can select all of your ridge beams until you've got them all cut. And so now if I go here and I look at this thing straight on, You'll see I've got myself some ridge beams that are cut and cleaned up. Now you're probably saying, well, uh, the distance is one inch. That's because there's a setting here where you can modify it and you can say, um, you know, I want the coping distance to be zero, half inch, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there you have it. That's how you would uh, make a, a, a structural uh, beam uh, in a joist or rafter connect uh, on an angle. Um, and if I move this, this was pretty cool about this. If I move this, you'll notice they're all updating with it which is pretty awesome. So that's the coping method um, to cutting uh, these these beams. So the second method, um, which maybe you'll find a little easier uh, without modifying the family, uh, there is obviously a method where you can make the family have an angle. Um, but the second method is using a reference plane. And so um, what I did is I, un I undid the coping. I'm going to go to my south elevation view. And you can see here's my roof and here's my rafters. If I just draw a reference plane here, so RP on my keyboard, reference plane. I can actually, I can say cut under modify. I can select one of my rafters and I can select the reference plane. And actually I can just continue on since I have multiple cut. And I'm just click, 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 clicking them all. Um, and then if I go to 3D, you could see it's actually cleaned up pretty nicely using the reference plane. So if if that coping method wasn't working for you, there's there's you know this method which could work as well. Uh, the downfall with this method is that you're you're relying on the reference plane. So you know if this moves, it's obviously going to move the cut. Um, if someone deletes the reference plane, it's all going to go away. So <laughs> so those are two methods. Uh, one method is coping. So you simply select the beam, uh, select cope, and then cope it with the rafters. And the second method is a reference plane. Just draw a straight line, use uh, modify cut geometry, select the reference plane, select your rafters, and you're good to go. So hopefully that was a good tip for you guys. Um, and I hope it helped today. Uh, thank you, Chris, for asking the question in the community. If you enjoy this channel, please subscribe here on YouTube. We at 45,000 actually today. 
uh, which is really cool. So let's try and get 50,000. Thanks guys. And I'll talk to you soon.